people always been so fascinated by feathers? And why have feathers inspired works of art for hundreds of years? Perhaps, Gislan, because humans have always dreamed of flying. This reminds me of an ancient legend telling us that a young man named Icarus made wings out of feathers and glued them to himself so that he could fly. And up he flew until he got so close to the sun that the heat melted the wax. Poor Icarus tumbled down to his demise. Alas, flying was not to be for humans until very, very, very recently on history's timeline. Artists, including jewelers, have derived inspiration from birds and their feathers always. Today's focus for us is going to be on feathered creations in the Galerie des Bijoux inside this Museum des Arts Décoratifs here in Paris. And whether bejeweled birds fly in gold, platinum or precious stones, jewelry artists always evoke one fundamental element of these flying animals, their feathers. And feathers have always attracted men. Take a look at this taipin showing a bonnet enhanced with diamonds. Feathers have fascinated women too, Gisela. What about this amazing hair comb inspired by feathered arrows created by Lucien Gaillard in 1905? In Chinese history, one bird played a very important role, the kingfisher, which was highly valued for its brilliant blue feathers. For more than a thousand years, Ornaments incorporating kingfisher feathers display the status and wealth of the person wearing them. Elegant Chinese ladies from the imperial court wore their hair in chignons held by elaborate combs and pins encrusted with these feathers. This particular creation, a lady's headpiece created in the 1800s in China, led a second very influential life which fascinates me. It was an objet d'art in no less than the dining room of the home of Salomon de Rothschild here in Paris, demonstrating how incredibly important it was to great collectors. Can we, by any chance, look more closely at how the feathers are meticulously applied to this masterpiece? Thanks to the museum, we can. Feathers have not always been used as just the actual material for the jewelry, but have been and are a timelessly driving motif in the creation of the actual designs, aren't they? They are, and among birds which have strongly inspired works of art, especially at the end of the 19th century, during the glory days of our nouveau, the peacock is a dramatic influencer. Each long feather seems to have a mysterious eye which looks at us. I love that observation. It's true, transversal across all the arts, the power of the peacock feather, whether in illustrations, of course, architecture, and look at this innovative plumed vase we have in front of us. But also in jewelry, the peacock finds a very precious expression spreading its tail to show off exquisite enamel and colored gemstones. René Lalique was a major Art Nouveau jeweler. He leads us right into a fantastic world where a woman's hair is made out of peacock feathers facing a wave which has turned into a snake. Here, the soft feather morphs into something with a dangerous side. Beyond birds and their feathers expressed by and for their species, they can be used in different ways. Let's look at a ring now from the 1700s, which uses feathers in another way. And here, we don't know exactly what kind of bird this is. The center element of this ring is ornamented with a little bird decorated with various feathers. Motif and material are here joined with delicate sentiment. Together, we have very much enjoyed looking at how birds and their feathers influence jewelry creations.